Hello, welcome to Hopkins Hangout Hour. Today's Monday, February 8th. We're all out on assignments today, so we are going to replay uh, February 3rd's edition of the Hangout Hour, where Sean McAuliffe, our Board of Health Director, gave us an update on everything COVID that's going on with Hopkins. It is uh, Wednesday, February the 3rd, so it being the 7 o'clock hour, that's why we're here. And joining me tonight, who uh, does from time to time, is Bob Hamilton, who will be co-hosting and uh, contributing to the conversation. And our guest I have a tonight, lot of questions for Sean. Okay. And Everybody our guest does. tonight um, <laughs> is the man who never says no, who is always there with information to keep us up to date, our Board of Health Director, Sean McAuliffe. Sean, well, thank you so much for coming back and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, yeah, I imagine there are a few questions on everybody. <laughs> Just of course, there are always questions, yeah. of course. So how about um, first we get up to speed? You actually had a little bit of breaking news on the last episode of Keep Moving when you were the guest there because you had just gotten some information. And if somebody hadn't heard that, can you give us the status and the update of what that information was? So, you know, anybody who's been watching the news is aware that um, we that we are in a challenge. We're we're, we're dealing with a logistical issue, um, and uh, so we have been um, we have been approved as a state vaccine provider. You know, Casey's done a fantastic job at positioning ourselves or, or the community to be, um, to provide vaccine. All right. Um, I just want to interrupt you there, Sean. And you know why? I don't just want to gloss over that because I think that is really cool. So could you please just take a moment and describe like what went into that and how the approval process came about? Um, because... I think that's really impressive that our little town did that. It's uh, we we could devote a show to this. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it it is a it's a complicated process where, you know, we have to um, we have to demonstrate to the Mass Department of Public Health that we have qualified people on staff to provide vaccinations. Um, we have to complete a series of exams. Um, we've done that. Um, we have to verify that we have the equipment necessary to store vaccines. We've done that. The state comes out and inspects our facility to make sure that everything that we have you know, stated is accurate. Um, they, Cause you know, they are our regulator as I am, a, you know, the regulator in the town, um, then they set, you know, the expectations for us. You know, we have to have, um, with our current unit, we have to have, you know, the data, um, the data recorder that they approve. We have to um, log in twice a day to, uh, to that lets, the, by logging in that, lets them know that the logger is working, that we're maintaining our vaccine stock. And this is our vaccine stock being our flu vaccine, you know, measles, mumps, rubella, that stock that we're carrying, or that we're storing that at the proper temperatures. And then be because we are part of that, because we ran successful flu vaccination clinics, because the state came out and verified that we could run both interior and exterior mobile vaccination clinics. They then um, provided us an opportunity to participate in the, um, the COVID vaccination program. So, you know, there's this whole level of proficiency that you have to demonstrate. We've done that. We have our um, there are two state plans, um, an emergency dispensing site plan and a, uh, it's late and I'm totally blanking on uh, what the SMS plan stands for, but um, 
we've got those plans in, they're current, they've been reviewed by the state and approved. So now we are, um, so then we, we entered into the, you know, I, I call it the quest to get access to vaccine um, mm-hmm. to start with the, uh, the COVID vaccination process. And, and that's, I mean, that's, a, it, it's a fairly involved process. Again, we had to demonstrate that we had the capabilities, that we had completed all of the work. Um, and so we had submitted all the paperwork, we had passed the exams, we received the approval. And then what happened was this, this is almost the exact time where the, um, first responders um, clinics were, uh, we were told to start um, putting together a plan to vaccinate our first responders. And we had our plan, but then they said each community had to be able to, um, we had to commit to a a 200 dose um, shipment because we didn't have 200 first responders we had, we were told that we would have to form a group. And on that day, the fire chiefs of Ashland, Hopkinton, Southboro, Westboro, and right, Westboro, Southboro, uh, Northboro, um, because they were all in communication, we, we formed a group. We committed, you know, we contacted the state, said we formed this group, we have approximately 400 first responders. So they, um, they assigned us vaccine. They approved our group to receive vaccine for our first responders. Um, and Westboro was identified as the lead health department. Um, they, had, uh, they had already um, put together an arrangement with the Doubletree Hotel. So it, it just made sense to go along with that. Um, we finished the first round of uh, vaccinations for the first responders. And then we were awaiting, you know, are you approving us for to receive vaccine? Just, we were kind of left in the dark, you know, what, what is our status? What do you expect from us? What do we have to do? And what we are waiting for is the approval. And then what they, they give us the approval and then they ship us uh, a survey and you use that survey to order vaccine. So it was, or it was the day that I appeared on, um, on the chat with um, Amy Beck from the senior center that we received confirmation that we were approved as a COVID vaccine provider. And then this, our whole plan all of our plans are based on receiving the Moderna vaccine. Um, It's the easier uh, vaccine to handle. Um, It's it's a process quite similar to operating a a flu clinic. So here we are all set. We put in an order for 600 vaccines and um, we received a word that um, we weren't gonna receive anything near 600 would be lucky to get a hundred um, and moving forward, we'd be lucky to get more than a hundred per week. So then mm-hmm. when you start looking at, you know, there are, I think there are roughly, I'll just call it 950. There are 950 residents that are over the age of 75 in town. There are another, I believe the numbers about 250 to 300 that are age 65 and above. And when you start looking at those numbers and then at us receiving 100 Moderna vaccines a week, we're going to be 12 weeks before we could, you know, vaccinate those two, uh, those two groups. And um, so Casey and I did what we do all the time. (laughs) We pivoted and figured out what are our options, you know, how can we, you know, we talked to our uh, our partners, and then Casey, um, you know, Casey did her magic, and we got a call that um, said, 
that we we would be considered to receive uh, are considered eligible to receive um, Pfizer vaccine, which Pfizer vaccine comes in a minimum shipment of well, there are 975 um, dose increments. Okay. So that that's a significant difference between um, you know, 100. the, the 100 uh, ship, you know, the 100 increments of Moderna. Yep. So it meant, and then the Pfizer has to be kept at negative 80 degrees. Um, so you need special equipment. You need, there's a thawing process for each vial. Then the, once you get the thawed vial, you have to add um, a solution to that vial. You have to mix the vial. Then you have, depending on the temperature, between two and six hours to use that vial. So there are just a series of logistical challenges that you have to overcome. And, and then you really, you wanna use that vaccine in about five days. Um, so we got the word on a Monday that um, we could consider going with the Pfizer. We had to have a decision by uh, Tuesday at five o'clock um, and was this yesterday, Tuesday? No, this was last week. Okay. And, and then you're sitting there going, if, if we don't get this right, we're going to, we're going to lose over, I think it was over a hundred thousand dollars worth of vaccine. Wow. And we were going to jeopardize our ability to get any future vaccine. So, you know, we spoke with Norman and the chief and, um, we decided that, um, you know, it, we weren't we weren't ready, um, and we needed to make sure that our plans were in place. We knew it would take a couple of days to get our plans together, but um, uh, but you know, I, I wasn't willing to make that or take that risk and then jeopardize our ability to provide vaccine um, in the future. Um, and then, you know, this. This is this moves. It, it, it changes every day, mm -hmm. um, and um, and at that point, the other critical thing, and this relates to this, the Google document. At that point, on Tuesday, we only had three hundred and say it was like three hundred and fifty people signed up. So now, I've got I've got to use. 975 vaccines, but I only have 300 people to give it to, or 350 people to give it to. So I'm at potential risk of losing um, that extra vaccine. So again, we, we just weren't willing to take that risk. Um, but in the, the, two consec or the two days after that, and following a, uh, uh, a call with the state health department, um, we were, you know, we were told that we would, if we wanted it, we would be allotted that that uh, Pfizer vaccine, um, and that Pfizer vaccine. It wasn't strictly for Hopkinton; it was for our group. Um, so we we spoke to our partners from the first responders group, and um, we developed a plan. We again consulted with the different fire chiefs, with town manager. And, um, and we put a plan together. We spoke to the DPH again, and um, we submitted an order on, uh, what was it, Monday, Tuesday morning? Well, we, we submitted the, I guess it was Monday morning, we submitted the order. Um, and now we're waiting. The order for the 900 Pfizer ones? Well, now on Friday, if we're gonna, like on Friday, <clears throat> we should know if if it's coming. Yeah. We should know if, like, we're waiting for the word from the Department of Public Health. We're waiting to receive a shipping number. Um, and if we receive those two things, then we will move to um, open up the clinics. And the challenge here is, again, you need to make sure that you have enough people in queue um, 
to be able to then rapidly open up a clinic, provide the notifications to everybody, have everybody sign up, and then bring in the, um, you know, just all of the clinic workers and basically set the place up, you know, or stand it up to execute and then uh, close it down. And um, so that's why we have the list. So in theory, we'll have, you know, Hopkinton's, the people that have signed up that are 75 and older from Hopkinton will have, a, you know, several people from other communities and that will give us our total. And then, um, and then if we get the vaccine, we will open up the clinic. People will receive a link. They'll be able to come in, um, schedule a time and then, um, and then we will, you know, then we will operate a clinic. And then so the next challenge is, I don't know that, like, I, I don't know that I'm going to get the vaccine the next week. Right. Um, you know, they're, they're going to have to give me another shipment or allotment of Pfizer three weeks down the road so I can provide a second dose. But, you know, the challenge it's this is the, it's like the supply chain challenge that um, we're facing, you know, you know, the governor says there are roughly a million people in the in the Commonwealth that are 75 and older. And we're receiving roughly 180,000 vac- uh, doses of vaccine a week. So that alone, it's, it's going to take some time to get through the 75 and older um, group. And then p- a portion of that 180,000 is going to finish off the second doses for um, the first responders and the, the, the people that receive, the people from the phase one group that receive their vaccine at the back end. So, um, and, and that's, that's, that'll be a bit of a challenge moving forward because you, you vaccinate a, a group over the month and then you start all over again, giving them their second dose. So it's, it's a process. And then if you want to expand your delivery, you have to expand um, your capacity to look to deliver vaccine. And that's one thing I'll credit the governor in doing is he's figuring out ways to, um, to provide as much capacity before the vaccine's available. And that, that's, that's causing some problem because a lot of people are around you know, like right now, Hopkinton has, we have our little star on the map um, as a, a clinic provider, but I, like many others, just, we have no vaccine. Um, so, you know, they're building the capacity. There are more mass clinics that are gonna be coming online in the next couple of weeks. Um, they announced today that the federal government has allotted um, vaccine to um, the pharmacy partners so that they can open up um, smaller um, vaccine clinics. So CVS, um, I think in our region, there are at least three CVSs that will receive um, vaccine. Um, There'll be several Walgreens. I I don't know the, I don't know what towns. in this area, if any, um, that have a Walgreens that are gonna be able to get shipments of vaccine. But um, the governor's plan is to con- uh, to continually expand capacity. Um, and, um, and while, and in doing so, um, you know, we'll, we'll start getting, uh, we hope a steady stream of uh, vaccine because at the end of the day, um, you know, this plan, um, like the, the, the health department's plan is to take care of those that are most in need, that are um, least likely to be able to get out, um, you know, and to travel into Boston or travel to one of these mass sites. And, and those, you know, that group in the population that's, um, that might encounter, you know, difficulties going online to, you uh, to um to fill out you know the scheduling form so um it, it's 
there's a lot of unknown. And, and I, um, as the chief, you know, reminds me, I like filling in uh, the space between the unknown and, uh, and it's, it's a challenge because all of, all of the health departments want to participate. We want to get going because we, we practice on these plans every year. Um, but the reality is right now, until actually until this is the, I think this is the first day that the governor actually mentioned local health departments. So Sean, so, can I ask you a question yeah. about uh, what you said earlier? I know you had originally planned on the Moderna if I'm saying that right, yeah. vaccine, and then you switched because of uh, notification that you probably weren't going to get that vaccine to Pfizer. And that required more people, a larger number of uh, doses available. And you've submitted those plans. And now you're waiting to hear from the state whether you will be allowed to receive them, place the order, get a delivery. No, we, we, we're allowed. We are allowed. You the just fact won't that we, know when. Like we 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 are allowed. We submitted an order, and until I have that order in my hand, and there'll be gloved hands because it's at <laughs> eighty degrees, um, and I can and only open be the cold box twice a day. Um, but until I have that in hand, um, like like that, that's all I can say right now, and because. You know, like prior to this call, I was on the phone with um, one of the communities, um, you know, in southern Massachusetts, and they 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 got burned several times where they they had large clinics planned with and they they had a university and a hospital partner, and they didn't receive any vaccine. So oh, wow. they had a turnout way. One of the clinics, they had to turn away over 500 people. Well, that's what I was wondering is you, even though Friday you expect to get what a delivery date of the quantity of vaccine that they're going to give you, yeah. whether that's the same as what you ordered and whether it, it could be a month before you get that, even though they well, say. We, we hope it would be sooner, but yeah, but yeah. to that. Point, I hope it was yesterday, but that didn't but, happen. But, you know, and to that point, you know, this, this town that I was speaking to, um, they were supposed to receive their Pfizer shipment on Monday, and it came today. Oh. Today, today was when they were opening their clinic, and and it's it's this. There's so many logistical challenges to to opening the clinic and to using the new software and 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 just getting people on board. And then making sure that you don't waste, um, you know, a drop of, you know, a dose of vaccine. Um, it's just a challenge. And then that's, so that's why, you know, we're all putting these lists together. But the lists, you know, we, you know, we've, I've, I've suffered <laughs> the, you know, you know, I've, I've suffered the, uh, I guess, the penalties of not having a clear communication um, about what the lists are there for. Um, and, uh, but, you know, a lot of this is just done in haste because while Casey and I are focused on um, putting the vaccination program together, we're also, man you know, that Monday we were managing um, illness and four hockey programs, two lacrosse programs, a basketball program, um, a few, and then about another twenty or thirty cases in town, and so you're like, you know, just constantly pivoting back and forth, and um, it's it's just a challenge to sit down and to check in with everybody to um, to get the communication, and um, so we got you know the Google, I think we we got it out on Facebook. It came out on the to the town's website. I think two days later, um, it came out to the school staff um, that we were compiling lists um, late that um, that Monday or Tuesday night, um, and we're you know and we're working with the senior center right now to get again to get all the lists together, mm. and um, and then there are there, there are these other like 
you know, the senior housing isn't managed by me. That partnership is operated through the executive office of elder affairs. So, you know, Linda, you know, the housing authority director and I said, like, we'll partner together. They order their own vaccine and um, they submitted their order. They, uh, they provided, we have two addresses that um, we proposed, but, you know, like, it'll be interesting to see if I get word that I've got Pfizer vaccine and um, for, for them, um, they only, you know, they, they have nowhere near a thousand people um, that need to be vaccinated. So like, they're like, oh, I'm going to put in a Pfizer, vac- a Pfizer request. I'm like, you can't because you, you don't have a quarter of that population. You need to put in a Moderna because they're never going to ship you. And if they do ship you, I'm not ready to, to, you know, run, you know, full-time clinics through the weekend. Um, do you run the risk of having a problem with the state when if the longer it takes, individuals on your list may find other places to get the vaccine and that lowers the number of doses you need? And can that cause a problem with the state providing you those doses? No, not, not really providing it, but it's then if, if, if that, when that happens, then um, you, you need to have you know, you just need to be able to quickly send emails out to to people to see if you can get them in there. And and right. and and it's just like you can see all of these challenges that you know continue to compound you know upon each other. And um, and uh, so it yeah it, it's not a it, this is a full time job on its own. Oh, absolutely. But and, it, did you? I know you had a great plan put together for the original Moderna. It, has that been scrapped and it's gone and say, we'll no. let you use it? No, because, you know, we are, you know, we are working with our, um, our partners at the DPH and, and we're working with, um, you know, like Norman, Norman is, you know, he's got a, a lot of skin in this game. He, he's going to all the meetings, like the, the chief, it, it's not uncommon for the chief Casey and Norman, we're, we're all on the same meeting because we want to make sure that we're all hearing the same message. Um, Norman is participating on some higher level meetings just to make sh- and, and, and advocating for us in the town. Um, I'm advocating at a, uh, a you know with a, a different group of individuals, but um, you know the hope is that at some point we'll flip back and, um, and we'll be able to get access to more Moderna. Mm -hmm. Um, Is it just, it's an easier product to use and it's just, there's a lot less risk. Um, But at at the the end of the day, we're just, we're looking to get, you know, shots in the arm. Yeah, exactly. So it's, uh, and, and then, you know, we're trying to do that you know, you know, working with a set of logistics that are completely out of our control. Um, it's really up to, you know, what can Moderna, you know, ch- and Pfizer churn out, and this could all change when Johnson and Johnson's comes online. You know, that's that should be in the, you know, I, I'm hoping before the end of February. Now, would that, that mean you'd a, have to work on a new plan for Johnson and Johnson? No, that that that. Johnson and Johnson is, it's a piece of cake. It's, <laughs> it's a single shot. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it, it doesn't have um, a lot of the refrigeration uh, restrictions that the other two have. Um, it's not as, um, it's not as, it's not that effective, but it's, um, Yeah, it. I guess maybe, maybe generally speaking, it's not as effective as um, the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. But you know, at the end of the day, our goal is to provide 
a vaccine that is going to ensure that, or as best as we can um, assure someone that, uh, that if they contracted COVID, they were no longer going to die from it. Um, we're, we're, you know, that's, that's the end goal is that we're going to be able to live just like we do with flu. You know, we, we vaccinate people to, if you catch flu, um, we're going to lessen the effect of um, you catching the flu if you do catch it. And then it's, um, or you might, you know, it, it's, it's this, I guess, like I said, it, it's just a lot of unknown. And at the end of the day, um, I'll, you know, like I said, the, just the delivery of the product, um, it's, um, it's delivery and um, distribution through the state process. Um, that's just all, it's all been a challenge. And, um, you know, the message is to be patient um, because we're doing everything we can on our end to get it into people's arms. And that said, you know, and, and this is one of the things that, you know, both, you know, Chief Slayman and Chief Bennett, um, you know, reminded me when I came on board is that, you know, Hopkinton is a, a, a very, we have a, a strong um, and independent population that's well-educated and they are ready and prepared to advocate for themselves. And this is an opportunity, if there ever was one, for people to advocate for themselves. Um, you know, it's if, if you have um, a senior that, you know, that's 75 and above that um, is comfortable getting in a car, but maybe not comfortable with um, using, you know, the, the online um, registration and scheduling system, you know, help them. And, 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 you know, there's a chance that you're going to be able to get them in to Gillette or some of these other facilities. You know, it, it, we want people, you know, when the opportunity arises, act. And if we're the easiest opportunity or the easiest venue to go to, you know, get your vaccine through the health department. But if, if there's an opportunity in, you know, one of these mass vaccination clinics or at a local CVS or um, one of the hospitals um, that are um, standing up larger vaccination clinics, by all means, I want you to go there. Um, you know, and, and it's what, you know, as we're trying to get um, some of the straggler, like the first responders that missed the first, you know, missed their initial vaccine, you know, opportunity, you know, what we've been doing is trying to help people find places to get vaccine. Um, and, uh, and we want, and, you know, we want people to go to the state website. We want them to be educated. We want them, if, if that opportunity arises, we want them to take that. And, um, but, you know, for those that, again, aren't able to get out, um, where our goal is to provide you an opportunity for those that, um, you know, are homebound, we are working on um, a means to provide um, those residents uh, vaccine. Like we'll, if we can, if I can, if I can throw it in an ambulance and bring it to them, if, you know, we're working on, you know, what, what are our options for, because we want, you know, again, my goal right now is to take care of all of those that are the most vulnerable in town. But right now, the only way for someone who's eligible in phase one to receive a vaccine for COVID-19 of any manufacturer is having the state provide it to some organization to distribute it. Is that correct? Yeah, you have to be an approved provider to be able to um, receive right. vaccine. But the state is deciding how many of those vaccines go to each of these. And yes. the state's the one that determined who qualified under the so-called phase one. Yeah, they, they set the rules. But it so. seems to me that I've seen cases, or maybe not cases, I, it's not true I've seen them. I have the feeling that the state has a tendency to expand their guidelines for phase one 
recipients of the COVID-19 vaccine to meet the needs that they perceive in the state? The, the, the one, and I, I wouldn't even call it, a, I don't know if I'd call it a criticism, but what, they, what they've done is they've, they've set up, you know, the groups and the phases um, and, you know, we, we just didn't have the vaccine to be able to provide, um, you know, all of the people in those phases. And, but, you know, that's the challenge that, uh, you know, it's uh, it, like, I, I, I've, I've become a, a fairly good study of, I think, the governor. And I can tell when he's, I can tell what's upsetting him and what's really got him angry. And, and it's this, um, the frustration that there, you know, I, I think, and I, I believe that the state really believed that there was a stock, there was a federal stockpile, you know, after we received our initial allotments that there was stuff on the shelf that we could draw from. And that, that doesn't appear to have been the case. And um, so now it's figuring out, you know, again, how do we put together a plan? How do we, um, how do we distribute it? How do we distribute it equitably? Um, who do we focus on to, to, to get it out the fastest? And at this point, you know, the mass sites have been a priority. Um, the pharma, the pharmacy partners, because they, in the hospitals, because of the equipment that they have, um, they have been a, a priority. And now, um, you know, the local health clinics. And um, so it's right now local health clinics, um, physicians practices, local boards of health are now, um, those are the ones that they're looking to now. So. So um, phase one was first responders. And then there's uh, phase two. Uh, fa first responders and, and frontline hospital people. Yep. And then phase two, part one is people 75 and older. And then phase two, part two is people with two or more comorbidities. And, and 65 and older. And 65 and older. And then phase yeah. three is like. Um, I'm not even going to. Like, I, I'm not even going to commit because. Like, no, no, this is, I'm not asking you that. Yeah, 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 but that. this is the other thing that the, the chief is saying is that, I, I mean, and all of us agree, this is so political now that, you know, it could be the, you know, the angry five foot three health directors are going to rise to, you know, phase uh, group two, phase 2.1. And and then, you know, all of us that are, you know, my height or below will jump in because we were, you know, that squeaky wheel. And, and, and this is, this is the problem It's you know, it's trying, like, you want to be able to, you know, like, I, I want to be able to give people hope. Um, I want to be able to, um, um, to, to help people schedule, um, you know, schedule for, you know, this vaccination event. Um, but they, they keep on changing and the rules and, and who falls into what group. And I, like, I'm, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know what to say about that, you know, the next group. No, but, but my question that I'm trying to get to is I understand the delineations my question is, who determines at what time like different groups go? Is it you know is it by the calendar or is it does the state suddenly say, oh, this first group seems to be pretty well inoculated. Now we open up the next one. How does that work? No, it's it's all run by the state. Okay. The state sets um, they, they they set the expectation of what the timeline is going to be. They make the determination of who's eligible. They, um, they assign, um, say the, the metrics or the, uh, you know, the, the, 
they outline the documentation that we're expected to review to verify that um, people are, you know, meet the age requirement, meet the job requirement, meet the, say, the comorbidity requirement. Um, so they set all of those rules, and our job is just to execute on that plan that they they put out. And that's why, you know, like I encourage people to go, you know, maybe I don't, a good practice would be to for residents to look um, every Thursday at the state um, vaccine website. That's when they're updating the website. That's when they're releasing um, the new vaccine appointments. Um, so it's really, it, if, if there's any time that you're gonna, you know, to look at the state website, it's, it's Thursday. Um, there'll be some updates on Tuesday, but Thursday is the time when they're gonna release a lot of the, uh, the, um, the, um, the scheduling appointments. And how many, how many um, towns did you say are in the little consortium that you put together? We have five. Okay. And, and then, you know, then there are towns, you know, this is a discussion I had with, uh, with one of the state reps last night is, you know, what if you don't have KCRI? You know, if you, what if you don't have a health director? What if you have a health agent who, you know, is just, they're really good with wells and septic, but don't. They, they don't really participate in any of this. Um, like they, they, we talk about equity and inclusion, um, but this system, um, the, the, the towns that have the resources or the staffing that are um, most active and aggressive um, are those that are gonna you know, benefit. So they're they're trying to offset some of this by setting up clinics in you know like in Roxbury and Brockton, um, and and really setting those those communities up. Um, but um, but this is an issue. Like there are a couple communities that you know we're we're trying to figure out what 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 are they who's taking care of them and. And are they going to be rolled in with us? Um, we, like we just don't know. And and that's that's a question that um, the, the representatives are bringing to the governor's team. Um, and um, and and I, I still think that there will be, you know, this this whole system is fluid enough that I expect there to be changes. And that's why it's it's really important to stay informed. And right. it's really important to advocate for yourself and your loved ones. You know? uh -huh. um, and then those that have got in, you know, if you if you speak to Irfan and some of the other um, the residents that have got their um, their parents in, um, they said it was fantastic. You know, they were in and out of the clinics in 10, 15 minutes. Um, it was it's it's the scheduling that's the the hurdle, and then the rest of the process has been. Um, Really right. fantastic. So you had mentioned earlier in the hour that you would never want to order a vaccine that unless you knew it could go into arms without, you know, being wasted. So we, we have the, the five towns together and you put in a request for a box of 900 plus Pfizer. Now, when you put your plan together and put in that request, do you have 900 plus people lined up that are ready to go? Should that box ever materialize? I've got, I've got the, I've got the numbers and I have people, I have lists of other 75 year old. Like we, we, yes, I am. I'm taking care of that. Like I'm a, I'm a former risk manager. I mean, yeah. People would give me a billion dollars to invest in property, and my job is to make sure that I'm not helping them invest in that contaminated property. You know, it's all about return on investment, protecting your assets, and 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 then, you know, if you fail to <laughs> execute, the risk is that um, that those opportunities are going to dry up. And, right. And I, I do not want to put, you know, Hopkinton at risk. Yeah. Not having 
you know, opportunity. Um, and uh, so that, I mean, that's, you know, yeah, it, it's. All right. Yeah. So I'm not asking you to play armchair quarterback, but I kind of am. Because... We have to talk about quarterback too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, there is obviously a lot of concern. There is a little bit of vaccine. There is all these stages and phases of when people are um, becoming eligible and when they can get it. There are like critical time frames of when the vaccine is viable. All this stuff goes in, right? Looking, looking back, I'm just curious at this stage where you've been through some of it, you've been through the first responders, you're preparing the 75 and older uh, crowd for, for what you can get. Do, do you think like, what do you, like if you were in charge, is there anything that you would do different? Cause the only thing, I, the only reason why I'm asking is it seems to me a lot like when people used to line up for Ticketmaster back in the old days, you know? And it was like, oh my gosh, there's only gonna be a hundred tickets and we camp out overnight and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, I understand like all the pressure and stuff, but with the benefit of a little bit of hindsight, you've, you've been through this, the very beginning stage of it, you know? Do you think that there is room for improvements? And if it, and you're saying that the, the, uh, the, the the name of the game is always changing almost daily. Um, do you see it evolving and do you see it getting better? What's your, what's your professional critique of how things are? I, I mean, I, I, I believe it's getting better. Um, I believe, you know, coming out of the grocery world where it's all about logistics. And I mean, th this is a, a job for logistics experts that, you know, it, it, were I the governor, you know, I would have, you know, and I had, you know, time to think and I wasn't dealing with the holiday surges and all of this other stuff and monitoring beds and availability and everything else that's going on with this pandemic. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it would have helped to have like a, a team of logistic experts working with, you know, the DPH and um, the governor's team. To put, like, this is why like Dave McGillery is, is really terrific at managing logistics. And, you know, it, you need these people to be able to look at, you know, you know, like I, I sat down Saturday and I was calculating how many doses per vial, per person, per hour, you know, and just calculating all these tables so that at the end of the day, I have my, my optimal number of vaccinators. So I need, you know, then, and then I'm able to look at those numbers and then look at my output to see how many chairs do I need? Um, how much, you know, what, what's the linear footage I need in a hallway? to accommodate the people that are waiting. Like this is a, it, it, it's, it's, it's like, you think it's just putting, you know, shots in arms, but it's, you know, I gotta have an ample amount of room for people to sit for 15 minutes. I need to have a checkout system. Um, for those that show up, like if, if they had a problem with their paperwork or they forgot their paperwork, you know, I need to have people that can manage that. Um, you know, and, it, and it's just, and you got to have contingency plans for everything. Just in, just, you know, um, you know, we were looking at the center school to run some of the operations, but you know, they've had a, they had a sprinkler break. They had, um, they're having some issues with the, the heating system. So, you know, we had a pivot and initially we were thinking about doing all of this outside. And then, um, and then after seeing how well the, um, the Westboro clinic operated and then just said, wait, we know how to do this inside. We just need to provide, you know, people need to wear masks. We have to set the expectations. You, right. you wear a face covering, um, you um, distance, you, we, we provide, you know, this is when you got vaccinated. Here's a little paper. It says the time that you can leave. There was a person sitting at the back door 
Um, you have to hand your paper in and your little tab with your time on it before you can walk out the door. Um, and then it's just making sure that you've got all the other, uh, you know, we've got to have an ambulance, we've got to have staff, um, we've got to have, you know, the EpiPens and I, just, just in case. So it's, it's building this whole structure and, um, you know, it's a, it's a lot of. Yeah, definitely. Work. Now, question I have is if somebody, if you get your first box and you got to do 900 plus, does that mean you're already scheduled to get your second box to give all those people their second dose? Or do you have to worry about yes. it? No, that, that is, yes, that the answer is yes. Okay. That the commitment from the state is that if they give you, you know, an allotment for your first dose, you are supposed to get an allotment for the second dose. Okay. What's in the middle is still an unknown. <laughs> okay. If I said anything differently, the chief would probably, you know, yeah. put me out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So earlier on, you were talking about advocating, advocating yeah. for yourself and advocating yeah. for um, your loved ones. Um, can you describe in this particular instance what that looks like to you? What does that mean? It, it's, it's sitting down with the chief and giving his mom a call. This is how you would register to get vaccinated at Gillette Stadium. Let me get my watch out. Here's a link. Go. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> and it's like, so where, where, what is this difficulty? And then we, we sat there with a group of seniors to figure out what were the hurdles that they were having troubles overcoming. And um, so we've been working to develop plans to help people get over those. And and then we're looking at, all right, we're going to need a staff of advocates that will help people. And then when you do that, um, you know, how do they, how do we handle their second notifications if they're getting vaccinated outside of Hopkinton? Um, and and it's, it's trying to put all of these plans in place to make sure that um, for those that, for those that we might help schedule to get an appointment outside of town, how do we make sure that they're gonna get notified and reminded um, to go back to that facility to get um, their second vaccine? Um, and then, you know, if they're getting vaccinated in a clinic that we hold, how are we managing that communication, that second communication? Um, and and that, that it might not only be communication, it might be setting up a ride. It might be, it, it's, it's, we have to, we have to look at all these um, contingencies. And then it's also, you know, what if the, if we plan to open up a clinic on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, but our shipment doesn't arrive until Wednesday at noontime, uh -huh. you know, how are we going to shift? And, um, and then, you know, how does that impact our volunteers? Do we have a second um, level of, uh, you know, volunteers, you know, um, you know, one of the comments, one of the, and it's, it's just making sure that you have that workforce um, and those competencies covered. Um, yeah. And uh, that's why Casey has me doing like greeting. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I know of a couple people in town who don't use the internet. Uh, what what do you do, especially, you know, 75 and older? What, uh, how do you handle that? How do you reach well, those people? You know, it's, it's, you know, it's what we've been doing with the, like the senior center is, you know, how do we in this, you know, during the pandemic, how are we keeping in touch with people? How are, like, if they, if they were regularly coming to the senior center for meals, you know, how do we, how do we continue to provide meals for them? So, you know, Amy has done a fantastic job at keeping in touch with those that are homebound, that, you know, do not use the internet, um, really, that might only use their phone. So we're looking at all of these different um, modes of communication. So we will, you know, and we're looking at, do we send out um, alerts over different, you know, phone systems? Um, do we... You know, again, do, 
you know, do we have scheduled times where people can call in, we can fill out their paperwork and then, um, and then we can help people um, navigate the, uh, the system. But you know, like, you can just see like, just all of these different complexities that we have to look at. And um, because at the end of the day, the last thing we want is, you know, to leave anybody out, um, especially those that are, you know, the most vulnerable. Right. Uh, you had mentioned earlier that Thursday is a big update day yeah. um, from the state. Um, is oh, there Friday. A- Thursday's mm-hmm. the update for how we're doing as a community. And then, okay. And then Thursday is also the, the date that they update, you know, if, so it looks, the governor had said that it looks like on Thursday, they're going to add a hundred thousand new scheduling slots. So okay. if, if, if you're 75 and you're ready and willing to go, you know, yeah. if, if it's that concert that you want to go to, <laughs> get your phone ready, get your laptop ready. And, and, right. and this is, you know, I, I, I know of a family that lives out of state and they knew that, um, like they knew that in, in New Jersey, like at 9 a.m. on, you know, Monday morning, they were going to be able to book their appointments. So yeah. they had two phones, two computers. They had everything set up. The, um, one was number 9,000. No, one was number like 90,000 or something. The other was like a number 127,000. <laughs> and, and it was just, and they, they, they hit send within like, like 20, 30 seconds of each other. Um, yeah. And it just, it just, and, and then that just, that's an illustration of this other challenge where, you know, you've got, you've got a hundred thousand, say, say we've got 200,000 doses of vaccine, but you've got a million people trying to, you know, schedule right. that. Right. Um, so it's, you, you can't set an ap- expectation that everybody's going to get access. It's going to take five to six weeks. Oh, right. actually it's going to take longer because it's going to take, Say it's it's gonna it could take uh, double that. Okay, so just got uh, thirty seconds left. If somebody hasn't been to the state website, um, what's your quick advice for how they find that? Um, I believe we have a link on the uh, on the town website on the COVID website, and do not gather for the Super Bowl. I do not want another spike, <laughs> and then we're gonna challenge the town to see if we can get green over the next two or three weeks. Excellent. Things are getting better, right? Yeah, we're, our case our caseload is now at what it was pre-Christmas. Um, and I believe that if we just, we, we avoid large gatherings and avoid overexposure, um, we have a good shot at going green. And that's, and then we need to bring our, our positivity rate down in the community. We're at a four. We should be um, below 1%. And Perfect. if we get there, that's going to help the schools open. Yep. Perfect. All right, Sean, thank you so much for your time. You're you're always giving a lot of time. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no. And and like I'm not touching that stuff back there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, it's bad enough trying to navigate this. It's yeah. uh, people like, oh, dry, <laughs> dry January. All right. It's not an option. All right. Thank you. And thank you for watching the Hangout Hour. We'll see you next time.